Today's science lesson is all about trees. When we have talked about plants, we've mostly thought about seeds or like smaller plants that fit in our garden. But trees are amazing, huge plants. And um, before I show you the book about it, here are some words that we use when we talk about trees a lot. Branch, twigs. Some trees make this sticky substance called sap. Here's a picture of a tree and it says tree. Trees have wood on them. And the wood is um, also called bark on a tree. So we'll look for these words in this amazing book that I love that Violet bought for me at our school book fair this year. There's so much hiding in a tree. They're so interesting. And that's why this is called The Magic and Mystery of Trees, written by Jen Green, illustrated by Claire Mikkel Fatrick. That's a long name. I love the illustrations in this book. So I'm just going to read a few pages today because it has a lot of information. And then we'll, we'll look back at this book again when we start studying animals and we learn about how trees are helpful to animals. Some of you probably already have a guess. Here's a big tree with many leaves. It says, what is a tree? A tree is a huge plant that towers above us. You'll find trees standing alone in people's yards or clustered together in thick forests. Trees are true wonders of, nature's, of nature. Some species can grow taller than 50 cars piled up. And trees can live for hundreds of years. The very oldest trees are thousands of years old. Unbelievable. Every part of a tree works together from the deepest roots that burrow through the earth to the smallest leaf on the highest branch, every part of a tree is working hard to help it sur survive. When you get to know these silent giants, you'll never look at trees the same way again. So some of the pages I just wanna show you, here's um, kind of a map of the earth, and it shows us that trees grow almost everywhere on earth. Here we are in North America. We're about here in California, and we are amazingly lucky that we live among some of the oldest and biggest trees in the whole wide world, the redwoods, the sequoias. So here's more about how trees live. You've never seen a tree eat a bowl of noodles or a peanut butter sandwich, so what do they eat? As long as it has sunlight, water and air, a tree can live, grow, and even make its own food. Oh, the amazing food making process of plants is a very long word. We learned about it the other day called photosynthesis. Mealtime, a tree's green leaves soak up light from the sun and they use energy from the light to mix air and water and they make a sugary liquid called sap, which is the tree's food. Some trees only make food in spring and summer because there's more sunlight, and then they lose their leaves in the fall. Trees that have leaves or needles, like a pine tree, keep making food in the winter. And leaves also really help us while they're busy making sap the tree's leaves give off a gas called oxygen that all animals, including people, did you know we're animals? We need that air to live. We need oxygen. Here are the different, some different types of trees. So these are the trees that lose their leaves in the fall. They're called broad-leaved. And so they only make food in spring and summer. And these are the trees like a pine tree that keeps its needles so it can make food in the winter. And here's some other types of trees. Here's the different parts of a tree. The tippy top is called the canopy. 
and then you see the brown branches growing from the trunk. Here's the trunk. The main stem of a tree is called the trunk. A stump is if the tree gets cut down and then underground are all the roots. And this is a good drawing because the roots of a tree are big. They spread out far and they're wide. They have to suck up a lot of water and vitamins to feed a whole tree. So here's more about roots. They keep the tree in place. Animals make homes in their roots. Water travels up the roots. Roots are big and tough. Here it says pollution. Tree roots are very sensitive. They can sense pollution in the soil and avoid it by growing a different direction. So look, this oil spilled. This tree said, oop, I'm not growing through that. It went around it. See how smart trees are? Here's a trunk from one that got chopped down. So this is a stump. Here's what some different bark looks like on different types of trees on their trunk. Four different types. Here's what some different leaves look like. They could be different shapes or different colors. And leaves are the ones that help the tree do photosynthesis, making its own food. So this is a picture of a tree in spring. The leaves are just starting to grow. Summer, it's full of leaves. Fall, it starts to drop its leaves. And now it's winter in a place where it snows. So that's a broadleaf tree that loses its leaves. Trees can grow flowers and fruits and seeds so that they can reproduce and make more of themselves. Those are some big seeds. Oh, and what are they saying about bees here? They're pollinators helping the trees spread their seeds. Okay, there's one more page that I really would like to show today. And that is this one. Living together. Life in the natural world is tough. It's easier for trees to survive when they help one another. I think people should be more like trees. They live, um, trees living in a forest grow best if all the trees are healthy. So if one tree is in trouble, the other trees will help it. They really will. This is true. Trees work together to make the forest warmer in winter and cooler in summer. If a tree is damaged and starts to die, its neighbor trees will pass it food through their roots to try to keep it alive. Trees will grow until they reach the branch of a different tree and then they don't say, hey, move over, we want to grow. They say, oh, I'm done growing here so that we all have enough room. They don't want any trees to die so that if a big storm comes through, the um, forest is strong. There's no holes for like the storm to winds to come in and wreck the forest. It's pretty amazing. And then their roots. Roots spread through the soil to form a hidden web. Forest neighbors stay in touch with one another and pass food to each other through their roots. Trees know how to take care of each other. They like have a way to communicate. It's so amazing. So when you are um, looking out your window or out for a walk or a bike ride today, be a biologist and see what you notice about the different trees in your area.